Are you looking for a photo editing package? This solution with easy to use pro level capabilities and a really effective cost model could be the solution for you, either to get yourself started in the post processing of your photographs or to replace Adobe Lightroom. Meet Luminar Neo, a powerful AI driven photo editor designed for photographers of all levels that want stunning results with an easy learning curve and powerful editing features. In this video, I'll go through what I think are some of the key features that make Luminar Neo stand out from what is quite a crowded market for photo editing software. And I'll show you the features that I believe will make your workflow faster and easier, whether you be an enthusiast or a seasoned pro. Luminar Neo could be the solution for you. So let's dive into some of the features using some sample images just to demonstrate the capabilities and I'll also put the links to Luminar Neo down below. They are affiliate links, but I will also be able to, from time to time to get some discounts. So please check those out and also connect to me on Instagram. My link is down in the description below the video too. As I, when I get the discounts, I will also be posting them in there. So without further ado, let's jump into Luminar Neo. Here we have the interface of Neo. We've got the catalog on the left. I've just created a small one for this. I do have my Lightroom catalog imported as well, which has something like 40,000 images. So scalability is not an issue. I've just created this one with these images to go through some of the editing capabilities. We have basic menu operations that you would anticipate, such as catalog management, importing, exporting files, etc. We also have a number of presets that can be utilized. And I'll cover these a little bit later. And then we have the main editing screen as well. And we can see all the options down here. And I'm going to go into some of these right now. So what I'm first going to do is pick this image just to demonstrate some, some of the core capabilities for image improvement. And then what I'll do beyond that is go into some of the basic, more advanced features of Luminar Neo. I'll create a virtual copy. I will now expand that. You can see this image is a little bit out of focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do the noiseless. It's recommending low. The AI does recommend the correct level of adjustment, which I find absolutely brilliant. You can see now it's zoomed in. You can see the fact that it's out of focus, but we have lost all of that noise in the image itself. So this is one of the techniques to really improve the images that you may want to normally discard, but you can actually now keep them. So what I'm going to do is then go to the super sharp option. You can see our image here slightly out of focus. I'm going to do the middle option of the three. When Luminar does this, it does actually process all of the options and then you can select the one that you want. So it's now finished processing. Look at the difference in that image. You can do the before and the after, and you can see how it sharpened up that image, got rid of any noise. You can also split the screen. The, the, to the left of the line is the unprocessed image. Part of the screen to the right is the processed image. So if I scroll that over, you can see now, you can see especially around the head detail and the wing detail, it's a little bit out of focus. Come through, you can see how it's sharpened that up. OK, let's now go back to our catalog and we'll go through some of the basic editing. I'm going to pick this image here of the Faroe Islands. I'm sure some of you may well have seen this location before. And you can see how dark the conditions were on the day. So let's just go into that. You can see here it's nicely in focus, but it's quite a dark image. So I'm going to go through some of the basic image improvements of Luminar Neo now. First things th first, I will create a virtual copy against which to work against. And I'll go into the edit options. So now that we're in the develop module, let's go to the actual core development of the image. I want to raise the exposure a little bit, bring up those shadows. The other thing I want to do, which I often do in post-processing, I want you to auto fix any chromatic aberrations and also auto defringe. We get high areas of really high contrast. Those are particularly useful. Before going on, I will just switch the profile to camera landscape. This was shot on the 90D when I was there. Um, some of these images are from the 90D and some are from the R7. But now let's cover some of the more specific 
editing capabilities. So what I want to do on this one is I just want to enhance that water. The water's still a little bit dark, so let's just bring that up a little bit. You can see it's just adding color to the sea now for me. So that's too far. I just want to give that sea a little bit of color. At any time, we can go back to the edits that we've already made by clicking on the edits button up here. Go to the develop. I just want to lift the shadows a little bit just to really give us, as you can see, it's very dynamic. Just want to drop those highlights a little bit on the image just to make sure we've got the contrast. And you can see how easy it is to edit these. I'm now back in the water enhancer and you can see the color that we've got. And this is showing you the area with the mask. It's applied its own mask automatically. And that's the area it's actually applying. So we've got some nice color in that now. But now I'm going to use the relight. This is a great one. You can see here we've got a number of options. The, near, the brightness now, I want to really pull forward the brightness on the close up. I'll look at the depth in a minute, but what I want to do is take the brightness in the distance down. You can see that it's created the, the foreground as being really bright. But what I can do is push that back. I want the waterfall and the village at the of the mountains to be in folk in not in focus but in the bright area for me i've probably over brightened that a little bit so now i can go back to my edits and what we've got is we've got a bit more contrast in the sky so we can see here our edits and i'm going to go back to the water enhancer just on the blue a little bit much i'm going to go back to our core develop now and i'm going to look at our color I want to increase the temperature of the overall image very slightly just to bring out the cliffs and the grass. And I want to increase the vibrancy of our image. So if I now go back to the tools, you can see that this is really starting to enhance the image. I also think that the cows are a little bit distracting. So let's look at what we want to erase here. I've got my cursor is quite small i just want to get rid of those cows just want to erase those there we go they've gone what i want to do now is bring a little bit more color to the sky the sky is just that little bit too dull for this image so what i'm going to do is go to the twilight enhancer i want to also now mask so i'm going to go to the masking option and you can see here there's a number of options i'm going to pick the ai mask this will assess the image for the various different ones. You've, you've got the pretty typical masking options that you would be familiar with. I'm actually going to pick the sky because that's the one I'm interested in. You can see it's got water, mountains, natural ground, etc. But I just want the sky for this particular one. You can see it's picking a little bit of the mountain and also it's just missing the horizon that I want to include as well. So if I go back on the mask, then I will select the brush and I will erase. So I want to erase everything in the mountains. I don't want those as part of my mask. And also when I paint, I just want to include the horizon just to give it that little bit there overlap onto the sea. So now let's go to our adjustments. I'm going to pick blue and now you can see it's just applying it to our mask. It's not applying to the whole image. I want to I really increase that. I want to give us a bit more detail in the cloud. Just drop the exposure just a little bit on the image. And if we just close that window now, I can show you the before and after. That was our image. Whoops, that was our image before. And this is our image after. I could do it. I could really focus. I just really want to give you a taste. I could focus on some of the defringing and stuff like that. All those capabilities are there, but you can really see the benefits of using this product. We've got lovely natural light, bringing the focus to the village on the hill. Also the natural fall as well. And the colors surrounding that really creating a great scene very, very easily using Luminar Neo. I now want to show you how quickly and Easily, you can make an impactful photograph. I'm going to create a virtual copy of that one. Go into the edit module. I'm going to enhance the landscape features first. I'm going to improve the golden hour. I want to give it that real glow. I'm just going to exaggerate this so you get an idea of what you can do. Go to the water enhancer. 
really bring out the detail in the water. Again, I'm just over exaggerating it just to give you an idea of what you can do. I'm now going to go to the crop as well, and I'm just going to let it decide on what it thinks is the best composition for now. I may just drop it down just a little bit, and we won't worry too much about the plane trails. I could erase those, but we've already covered that previously. So we've now got that crop. I like that image, but what I want to do is just draw attention into the center. We can use a vignette. I am just going to darken the corners down a little bit. I want the roundness, sorry, not the roundness, I want the feather to be 100%. Now you can select the subject. I'm actually not going to pick the sun. I actually want the subject focus to be not down here, but I want the vignette to be centered around this so it brings the sky down and doesn't darken down the top corners. Sorry, it doesn't darken down the bottom corners quite so much. And I think that is as quick as it is to edit an image. And again, if we look at our before and after, We've got our before, and we can see the impact that it's had so simply. And that took me one or two minutes maximum to create that image. I hope that that's given you a really good flavor of the editing capabilities. I've really just skimmed the surface of the capabilities of Luminar Neo. There's so much variety to do, and I'll be covering that in some future videos. Let's now just very quickly touch on the presets, then we'll talk about integration with Lightroom and Photoshop, and then we'll talk about the pricing model. What I want to do in this one is really show you the power of presets really quickly. I'm going to pick this image. It's a little bit dull, lovely coastal, lovely water drag. I'm going to pick the presets now. I'm going to go into this, and I'm just going to go into the quick start presets. And now you can see immediately we've got a number of different presets that we can use. And as you hover over them, you can see the effect that each one has on the image. I actually pref quite prefer set the scene. I love the way it's given us a little bit of tone in the, whoops, little bit of tone. If I click on that, it'll apply it. It gives us the tone in the rocks, the color in the sea and the sky. But what I really like about the presets is now that we've, applied that. If I go into the edit module, you can see we've got a little dot by edit. If I click on that, you can see exactly what it's applied. And now we can adjust this to our heart's content. So the enhance, for example, I can just really up that. And I think that's as good as a final image, maybe a vignette. So the power of presets, because it's white labeled, you see exactly what it's doing. You can then make adjustments afterwards is incredibly powerful within Luminar Neo. I've now launched Lightroom and can show you the capabilities and how this integrates into your workflow if you're already a Lightroom user and you want to use Luminar Neo capabilities. If I select an image and right click, I can do a number of different things. I can edit it in Luminar Neo directly. I can also export this. And then I've got a number of capabilities. I can open the original source file. I can edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments that I may have already made. That will create a TIFF that I can then edit against. And then you can do a number of the capabilities of Luminar Neo. I've not covered those. Those are for future videos. So if I open that source file, you can see here I've got my source file open. And now I've got my edit and my presets. You notice I haven't got my catalog because I've this is now just incorporated into part of my workflow and I've got the full editing capabilities of the actual Luminar Neo software now. So this, if you are a Lightroom user and use the catalog extensively, then you can actually just go ahead and incorporate this into your workflow. Here, I'm just gonna do develop and auto adjust. I'm gonna increase the exposure a little bit. I would have liked a little bit more exposure increase on that. And let's just now apply those. And now that we're back in Lightroom, you can see that we've got our original untouched image and we've got the Luminar Neo edited version in TIFF format. And now we can actually develop this within Lightroom if we want to, or we can take it backwards and forwards in Luminar Neo or just launch Luminar Neo. So in terms of your existing workflow, it fits seamlessly. And this is exactly the same for Photoshop as well. So you don't need to adjust your workflow 
if you are already a Lightroom or Photoshop user. What about, I see an eye here, you say, well, I'm based here in the UK, but the model is the rest globally between the two businesses. You've got Adobe that have your subscription, whether it be for Lightroom plus quite a bit of storage or Lightroom and Photoshop with not quite so much storage. And then you've got Luminar Neo, which offer a perpetual license. Now, the big difference here is that Luminar Neo, the perpetual license with a number of upgrades, also is approximately just over half the price of an annual Adobe subscription. If I get the desktop version, whether it were be on Windows or Mac, and then the mobile version, then it's probably about two thirds of an annual subscription. So actually the price is significantly less and you're not invested in that subscription and you're not tied to that particular subscription, which I think is actually the way ahead. I have been using Adobe Lightroom for quite a while and it just, the, the subscription model is something I'm not a big fan of. I like to own the software, be in control of my environment. So this is something that you really need to consider. In terms of the pricing, they will change all the time and there will be discounts that can be applied. So I will drop the links, they are affiliate links. I will drop those links in the description of the video below. And that will include the prices that are current because it will link you straight to that. And if there are any times that I get a discount, then I will also drop those below. And I'll also put those onto my Instagram feed so that you can see that. So be sure to follow me on Instagram too. Luminar Neo is now part of my basic workflow. I'm still using Lightroom because I've got so much cataloging, so many keywords, so much information stored in the Lightroom database. What I will be doing though, because Luminar Neo has 99% of the capabilities that I use within Lightroom and those few, I, for example, I virtually never use some of the AI capabilities of Lightroom because I, I'd like to see the original images and use it for post-processing, not generation of images. The one thing I cannot really do right now is export all of my catalog out of Lightroom. So what I'm going to be doing is over the next few months, I'm going to be looking at Darktable as a potential option. And I'm also going to be looking at Adobe Bridge as a potential option as well. So remember to hit that subscribe button so that you see those videos when I drop them. And I will be dropping more videos on Luminar Neo in the future as well. In conclusion, you really need to consider and choose Luminar Neo if you want a fast, rapid, AI-driven post-processing editor for your images to really deliver an easy and rapid process to deliver your final visions. It also comes at a much better price point than some of the main competitors out there, particularly Adobe Lightroom. Essentially, Luminar Neo gives you a professional editing capability with a beginner level style and ease of use capability and at a price point that is to be liked. So I hope this has been really useful in terms of your thought process, whether Luminar Neo is right for you to replace Lightroom and whether just this very small taster of what it's capable and how quickly you can edit images for your final vision of your photos. I hope that that has come through today. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and also check out these videos next. Thank you very much for your time in watching this video. And until next time, thank you and see you soon.